Hey guys, so in this video we're going to start talking about rotational motion, also known as rotational kinematics. I'm going to take you back all the way to the beginning of physics and we're going to look at basic motion, one dimensional motion, and we're going to contrast and compare the two. Um, you're going to see that a lot of things are similar, but there's some differences. So let's check it out. All right, so rotational motion is when you have motion around a central point, around a central point. So imagine you have a tiny object that spins like this around a central point. It forms a circular path, okay? That's one type. Um, the other type is when you have a cylinder that spins around itself, okay? Now, you may remember that we described your location um, using position, which is variable x, right? We used to call this simply position, but now that we have linear and rotational motion, we may want to specify that this is the linear position. Now, if you don't see the word linear, you assume it's linear. The other one is going to be rotational position, which is describing where you are in a circle, okay? So, for example, if you are moving in a circle, think of this as a track, and you can only move around that track either this way or this way. You're trapped, right? And there's two ways you could describe your position. You could do it by saying, well, this is coordinates x comma y. And then if I move over here, I have a new x and a new y, right? It's a two-dimensional grid. Um, it's a surface, so you could do that. Um, the problem is that's more complicated than, um, than it needs to be because now I have x's and y's changing. What's actually easier is to use a single variable, a single number to describe where you are. And we do this using angles, right? So for example, you may remember um, that this is zero degrees and this would be 90 right there. So we're gonna say that this is, let's make it up something, 80 degrees, okay? So that's easier because I'm using a single number to represent where you are around the circle. So that's what rotational position is. And it uses the variable theta. You might remember that theta is what you use to represent angles or degrees, okay? Now, Notice here that I have the words rotational and angular. And I need you to know that these words basically mean the same thing. They're used interchangeably. So you see a lot of uh, words like angular velocity. It just means rotational velocity. Okay? So these words are used interchangeably. All right. So whereas in linear, rotation, linear motion you used x, in rotational motion we used theta. So what I'm going to say here is that x becomes theta, the x equivalent um, in rotation is theta, okay? Later on, you're going to get some equations where um, old equations, but instead of using x, we're going to use theta, all right? So let's, let's look a little deeper into the um, differences between the two. So position is defined as how far you are from the origin. You may remember this. It's your distance from the origin. Rotational position is the same thing. It's how far you are from the origin. The difference is that the first one we measure using meters, and the second one we measure using angles. Now, you could do either radians or degrees, but we're going to use radians most of the time. Okay, so we're going to use radians, which is abbreviated rad. All right? Now, origin, if you remember, origin is simply where x equals zero. So, for example, let's say we got a line here, and you are here, okay? And then there's two points. Let's draw three points here. Just two points, whatever, that's fine. And let's say that the, these two points are 10 meters apart. So this would be 0, and then this would be 10, and maybe you are at 7, okay? So if this is x equals 0, this is where the origin is, okay? But we could have done this a little bit different. And then we say that your position, x, u, is plus 7. But we could have put the origin right here. We could have arbitrarily said, I want this to be x equals 0. And then this distance here is 3. So your x, x, u, would have been negative 3. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that origin in linear position is arbitrary. Arbitrary meaning up to you. You can change it, and sometimes the problem will tell you, but it could change. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a fixed thing. In rotation, it's a little bit different. 
In rotation, origin is still where position, in this case theta, equals zero. Okay, zero degrees or zero radians. Um, let me put a little meters here. Um, zero degrees or zero radians. The difference is that whereas here it's arbitrary, it's up to you, okay, up to you, unless the problem tells you. Uh, in rotational position, the ro or origin is always fixed, okay? And it's always fixed. It's fixed at the positive x-axis, okay? Zero is always here. Remember the unit circle. This is always the origin, okay? That's non-negotiable. Whereas here, you could put it whatever you want if you're given that kind of liberty in a problem. Okay, the last thing is direction is also arbitrary. Um, direction is also arbitrary. You could say, up to you, you could say that this is positive or you could say that this is the direction of positive. Okay? Either or works. And then you adjust accordingly. If you're in rotation, direction is fixed. So clockwise, clockwise, which follows a clock, duh, goes this way, is negative. And counterclockwise, which goes this way, is positive. Okay? Direction here is also fixed. It's not up to you. All right? Now, one quick note here, which is it might seem backwards, right? And I like to think of this as backwards. Why couldn't they have made the direction of the clock positive, right? Why is it that the clock is backwards? Well, it's because this stuff actually follows the unit circle. And you might remember that the unit circle grows like this. The angles grow like this. The unit circle and the clock are backwards from each other, and we use the unit circle, um, and that's it. So those are the, the key differences between um, linear position and rotational position. We're going to quickly talk about the um, displacement now. So the rotational equivalent of linear displacement, so position is x, displacement is changing position, which is delta x, okay? Um, rotational position was theta, so rotational displacement is simply delta theta, okay? So instead of delta x, the equivalent is delta theta. So if you're moving this way, we measure your delta x. If you're moving this way, we measure your delta theta. And these two quantities here, delta x and delta theta, are linked, they're connected, they can be converted from one to the other using the following equation. Delta x equals r delta theta. This r here, you can loosely refer to it as radius, I'll talk about this a little bit more, but what it really is is radial distance, which is distance to the center. So I'm going to write distance to center, okay? Um, radius would be the radius of a cylinder, but if it's a distance, a point spinning around a circle, then you're talking about distance to the center. That's a technicality, don't worry about that too much. You, you might have seen this, you might remember this equation, you've seen this before. Uh, in math, this looks like this, S equals R theta. In fact, most textbooks, I think every textbook actually, um, talks about this equation like this. But I like to use delta x instead of s because that's what you're used to, and delta theta because we're looking at the displacement. This is the arc length equation, and that's where this stuff comes from, okay? So I'm going to use this version right here, and it should be fine. So quick points about this equation, really important equation. This equation speaks radians. What do I mean by speaks radians? Well, if you're plugging in a delta theta into this equation, we'll do an example just now, but if you're plugging in a delta theta, that number that you're plugging into the equation has to be in radians. Otherwise, the equation doesn't work. Also, if you're instead of plugging in delta theta, you're solving for delta theta, the answer will be in radians. So either you're giving the equation radians, or if the, the equation is giving you an angle, it's giving you that in radians. That's why I say here that the input must be in radians, you have to plug in in radians for the equation to work, and the output will be in radians. If you get an answer out of that equation, if you get a delta theta out of that equation, it will be in radians, okay? Uh, now, what the hell is a radian? One radian is approximately 57 degrees, right? So 57 degrees is somewhere around here, 
somewhere in the first circle, uh, first quadrant. So that's what roughly what radian is. It's just a different way of measuring angles, right? Um, and to convert between radians and degrees, you just have to remember that 360 degrees equals 2 pi. Now, most people remember that. Um, what a lot of people don't realize is that the unit for pi is radians. That's why this conversion works. So pi is 3.1415 radians. Okay, another way you can do this is just by saying pi radians equals 180 degrees. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm going to do a quick example. Um, we have an object that moves along a circus of radius 10. Uh, I'm sorry, a circle, not a circus. So let's draw this. You got a tiny little object. It spins around a circle here, and it has a around a circle of a radius of 10 meters, which means that the radial distance, if you go around a circle of radius 10, it means your radial distance to the middle is 10. Um, and it says here that you start, um, you start at 30 above the x-axis, and then you go all the way to 120 above the x-axis. So let me draw another circle here just so I can put the angles. So 30 is somewhere here. You start here. And then remember, this is 0, 30, this is 90, so 120 will be somewhere here, okay? So you're going from something like this, from here to here. And we want to know what is your angular displacement. Angular means rotational. I'm asking what is your delta theta. Very straightforward, the definition of delta theta is delta theta is theta final minus theta initial. Um, and then the angles are 120 minus 30, so this is just 90 degrees. Now I have to be very careful. Um, if I had a negative here, like 45 down here, I'd have to plug it in as a negative, okay? And that makes things a little bit different. Uh, I just have to be careful with the negatives. So that's the answer for part A. Um, it just asked for angular displacement. It didn't say if I wanted radians or degrees, so degrees is fine. And then for part B, it wants linear displacement. Linear displacement is delta x. And I just showed you how I can connect delta x to delta theta. So we're basically converting from one to the other. Delta x is r delta theta. I have r. r is 10 meters. And delta theta is 90 degrees. Now here, I hope you're saying, no, it's not. This is wrong. And you're supposed to use radians. Okay. So I want you to actually write this out and then cross it out so you remember not to do this. Right? It has to be in rad. Okay, So what we're going to do is we're going to quickly convert the two. 90 degrees, I converted using this ratio here, which means I'm going to put them in a fraction. So I'm going to say over here, um, I have degrees at the top, so I want degrees at the bottom, 180 degrees. And then up top, I have pi radians. And then what happens is the degree symbol cancels, and I'm left with just radians. And then you just multiply this in the calculator. You're going to put 90 times pi divided by 180. And if you do that, I have it here. Um, actually, I have it here as pi over 2. Right? That's a little cleaner way of doing. And then the other version is 1.7. Um, they're both radian. Okay? So now I can plug this in here. 10 times 1.57. And the answer will be... 15.7 meters. Why is it meters? Because meters, oh, let me disappear. Why is it meters? Because meters is the unit of delta x. Okay? So that's it for this one. Hopefully it makes sense. Let me, let me know if you guys have any questions.